here is what you, you want to know. You want to know each of these, and we assume that, so when you talk a standard trade model, we are talking about a, a large country. We are talking about a country that can have an effect on terms of trade. So the standard trade model is about the effect of, of terms of trade. So it's a large country. So you're a large country, whether you're thinking about a tariff or export tax or export subsidy or, or growth. And then you would think about the international trade effect. So you have a growth. You're starting with a specific production possibility frontier. And therefore, well, it, oh, you've got to get information whether you're an exporter or an importer. And you are on a specific indifference curve. So you're going to start somewhere. Then you're going to have an, a growth. It depends whether the gr growth is biased toward your import or if it's biased toward your export. What if it is biased toward what you're importing, let's say? You want to look at the relative supply, relative demand curve, and equilibrium in the world. So this is world market, this is relative demand, this is relative supply in the world. So relative prices, price of export divided by price of what you're importing, let's say. This is quantity of export divided by quantity of what you're importing. I mean, it's cloth and food or whatever, but I mean, right. So the, the, again, still standard trade model, this is production possibility frontier. So this is quantity of the two goods that we're talking about. So this is what you're going to import. This is what you're going to end up exporting, right? The way that I'm drawing it. Are you following? You're producing here. You're consuming there. Therefore, the good on the vertical axis, you are um, actually you are all the other way around. So you're exporting this. So this is quantity of export. And this is quantity of import. And then you come and look at the relative supply, relative demand curve here. And if there is a bias growth toward what you are importing, something like this, uh, what's going to happen here? You're producing more of what you are importing. So relative supply curve would shift what you're importing, what you're importing. So relative supply curve would shift up, right? Bias growth toward what you're importing. If you have a biased growth toward one industry, quantity of food that is produced in that industry would increase Rybinski theorem, remember? Quantity of good produced in the other country would decrease. Right. So actually, a quantity of export would decrease, quantity of your import would increase. Right. So we're going to shift up, we're going to shift to the left. So we're going to shift to the left. Right. So relative price of export, price of import, Compared to before, it's going to increase. What is what is going on? Uh, what, what's happening to your terms of trade? It is improving. It's increasing. Good. So it's improving. So this is price of import divided by price of export. <coughs> The slope is price of import divided by price of export. So it's going to get flatter. Yeah, it's going to get flatter. Not only in this case, not only you're going to benefit from growth itself, but you're going to benefit from, in, from a change in your terms of trade, an improvement in terms of trade. Right? Right? So there are two things that you one is that you have an expansion of production possibility frontier, which is good by itself, right? But the other one is that now the budget constraint it's getting even flatter, which is good for me, right? Because I am so because terms of trade increases, because I'm gonna be on a higher on a higher indifference scale. Look here guys. This is getting a little bit messy, but, but look here. 
if I want to remove terms of trade effect, I have to draw a line that is parallel to my original price line, to my original budget constraint. So this, you move up this movement from here to here. This is only due to growth. And then the rest of it movement from here to there, this is due to change in terms of trade. So there are two things that, that's happening. You're going to aggregate economic welfare increases once because of growth, and then again because of change improvement in terms of trade. This is because you have a bias growth towards what you're importing. Remember, it's going to be opposite if it, the growth is biased towards what you're exporting. It's going to have a negative impact on the terms of trade if growth is biased toward your export. So in fact, this is a nice sort of question. I can make up, I can talk about a bias growth uh, in, in another country, what is the effect on me, or uh, and uh, bias growth in, an, in another country in terms of what I'm importing, what I'm exporting, or a third country, a bias growth in a third country that is exporting, what I'm also exporting, so on and so forth. So you have to think about the effect on relative supply, relative demand curve, the effect on uh, terms of trade and therefore the effect on any questions it's going to get a little bit you know uh, maybe when, when it's about a tariff not only relative supply would shift but also relative demand also there's going to be a shift in relative demand as well when there is about a tariff or export tax remember so so you have to be careful with that there's going to be a, an, an effect on relative supply but also relative demand when it's about growth the effect would be only on relative supply. There is nothing, nothing is happening in terms of relative demand. But the tariff, any sort of government policy would also affect demand because it's, there, there is a wedge between internal price and external price. So that's standard trade model. Three things, production possibility frontiers, terms of trade, relative supply, relative demand curve. These are, and, and so, so be careful. So you want to distinguish between the effect of growth itself and the international trade effect. Then we talked about a different set of models. So we talked about economies of scale. So we talked about economies of scale. So we talked about internal economies of scale and external economies of scale. So with the, with the external economies of scale, you have this infant industry and sometimes protectionism might be helpful. Internal economies of scale, you talk about downward falling sort of supply curves or average cost curves. The, m the more the industri industry as it gets larger and larger, this is price, um, you want to produce at a lower and lower price. Price would go down as industry gets larger and larger. And then so you might have supply curve for a uh, foreign and your supply curve, and sometimes you might have comparative advantage in that good, or you may think that you have comparative advantage in that good. How do I sort of, the, how do I show on this graph that uh, my country, I have a comparative advantage in producing the good? I'll draw another supply curve, which is below this supply curve for foreign, right? So at each quantity, I can produce it at a lower cost, even. That means, so this is S for home, for example, right? Or Switzerland, for Switzerland and Thailand, as we've talked about. So these downward sloping supply curves, these are sort of my average cost curve, but they are coming down as I produce more and more, as industry gets bigger and bigger. And you have a world demand, right? So it's better for the country home to produce the good because price would be lower. But, but it's difficult to get into this market because when you start your summer here, now you want some government protection. Whether tariff or protection or trade barrier is helpful or not depends on the supply curve in that country. Whether the market in that country is large or small. Careful, right? You hearing me? So now, now uh, you have to think about a demand curve for that country, for home country. If demand for home is somewhere here, even if you have complete trade barrier, autarky, you cannot be, become com competitive enough to, to, to compete in the world market. 
because with autarky even price would be somewhere there. Right? So tariff or import quotas, <coughs> they're not helpful. So I need to put, so if that's, th then, then what would I do if I want to be, be competitive eventually? Then you have to think about subsidy, production subsidy, bringing down the price, production subsidy for original. Uh, but if the uh, demand, so if this market size in home, in my example, home, maybe, maybe you know, previously it was Thailand or something. So in home, it has, uh, the, the issue is market size, demand size. If it is large, which generally it isn't, by the way, uh, one country is re very small relative to the world, so generally it isn't. But if it's large enough, then trade policy might be helpful. Right, then only trade policy could, could, we could get. Trade policy, with, with trade policy, we're gonna come down and down and down on our supply curve, we're gonna hit where we can compete with, the, with, with other uh, countries in the world market. So that is internal. So we talked about downward falling supply curves, size of the market, something, and, and then, uh, and so, so, Patterns of trade with these models, we can't say really. It has to do with which country started this. It, uh, we also talked about the learning curve, right? So sometimes just producing more and more over time bring the average cost curve down. So we talked about learning curve. So these um, sometimes for, for countries that do not have efficient capital markets, infant industry arguments might be a justification for trade policy. We talked about external, I'm uh, sorry, this was external economies of scale. We talked about internal economies of scale, monopolistic competition. Right, so with monopolistic competition, think about this, the, uh, the, the, the demand for each of these curves, and this was the demand curve that we talked about. It has to do with the size of the market. Um, so, so this is what I'm gonna give you size of the market, number of firms in the market, an indirect relation, inverse relationship between si number of firms, direct relationship between size of the market, minus B times P minus P bar. This was my demand curve. From this demand curve, I was able to derive price as a function of number of firm and average and also given a total cost function I was able to derive average cost as a function of number of firms that's what I did the key guys from here the key was to recognize that these firms so monopolistic competition it means we have many small firms the key is to recognize that these firms, marginal revenue, well, if, if I say price is equal to A minus B times Q, then I can say Q is equal to A divided by B minus one over B times <coughs> times Q. So price equal to A minus B times Q. Total revenue is equal to A minus B times Q, which is price, times Q. Right? Is that good? And therefore, my marginal revenue is equal to A minus 2BQ, <coughs> which means that it's equal to A minus BQ minus BQ. This is my marginal revenue. 
So my marginal revenue is equal to this is price, correct? This is price, price. So it's equal to price minus B Q. Mm. This was more straightforward. But, uh, but this firm, so now I sort of, I, I try and use this specific, and, and if you look at this specific, so if I rearrange this thing, I'll get quantity is equal to um, A divided by B minus B divided, minus one over B times P. What do I have here? I open this thing up. Right? And I wrote it in these terms, right? So I had an intercept, right? I rearranged that thing, I had an intercept, and I had a slope for my P. You see that? That's what I did. <coughs> and then I sort of applied this for my marginal revenue that I'm gonna get from her, from there. So I applied this. And I said, I said my marginal revenue in equilibrium should be equal to my marginal cost. So my marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost. So my, and well, we had a, a, a cost function that looks like this. So my total cost, I believe it looks like a fixed cost plus a little c times q. So my marginal cost was equal to little c. So I came here and I said marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So little c should be equal to price minus b times q. And therefore, price should be equal to little c plus b times q. Mm -hmm. This is what I did to be able to now. But then here, and, and I and, and I used this. Well, applied it to the uh, to the demand curve that I have to derive my cost function. But then I also used that sort of a trick. I said these firms are symmetric. Therefore, Q is equal to S divided by N. I didn't want to have Q in my price function. I wanted to have N in my price function. So I use this, put it back in there, and get my price as a function of N. So I'll, I'll ask you to derive price as a function of N, something like this. Also, average cost, I can write it as a function of N. So again, instead of Q, I'll put uh, S divided by N. Right, in my average cost. And then the key was that in equilibrium, since I have many firms, price is equal to average cost. That helps me to find equilibrium number of terms. Is that good? So this is more mathematical. Good. And then, well, when you get these things, uh, also there is a graphical representation where you can have number of firms on the horizontal axis. So number of firms on the horizontal axis, and then price and average cost on the vertical axis, and it sort of looks like this, and like this. And this was my app. This was my price function, and this was the average cost function. And then I said, what's going to happen? And then you're going to think about trade. With trade, you're going to have a larger market size. Right, so with trade, we have larger market size. So this is intersection, of course, is the equilibrium originally with the larger market size. If you look at the average cost function, the, the average cost function is going to get flatter with the larger market size. So as it gets flatter, larger market size, it's going to get flatter, right? And as it gets flatter, price would go down, number of firms also increase. That's how trade helps with internal economies of scale. So we talked about internal economies. So these, were, these are the models that we talked about. So we have two models of economies of scale, and then we have Ricardian, specific factor, Heckscher, Olin, and Steiner trade models. These are num the total numbers. Then we started talking about trade policy. So we talked about 
tariff and, and, and import quota, so on and so forth. And now I, I, I talked about whether the, now I differentiated between a large country and a small country and the effect of these policies. And so definitely now you're gonna see a question on tariff or import quota, so on and so forth, export subsidy, export tax, or production subsidy for that matter, although production subsidy by itself is an industrial policy, not a trade policy, but yeah, and, and so, so I mean, it could, be, and these things could be in the form of when you have an externality and when you don't, right? So if if it's about, say, if it's about a large country, let me do one example. When you have a large country, because with a small country, it's relatively, I mean, it's easier, let's say. Right? With a large country, what's going to happen? So with a large country, you think about, say, this is one country and this is the, the other one. So there are two countries. And so with a large country, think about that specific country, country A or home, and then the rest of the world. So rest of the world. And say the rest of the world is here. So if it's a large country, any sort of policy, you have to start by, uh, of course, I mean, you need to label all of these axes. Remember, I'm not doing that, but you need to label the axes. So quantity and price. But you have to have three graphs, guys. If it's a large country, you want to see what's the effect? You have to have three graphs. The country itself, rest of the world, and here you're going to have a world market. And this is supply of export and demand for import. So you have to construct that. And uh, well, home, in this case, if, if I'm drawing it this way, I'll tell you some information about autarky price, whether autarky price is higher in home or rest of the world. And if this is the case, what do you think? Do you think home would be importer or exporter of that good? Importer. importer. See, autarky price in home is high. So you're gonna so sub, uh, demand for import, you're gonna get it from home. So you will see something similar to the homework questions that I've given you. Remember? So I may give you actually an equation for the supply an equation for the demand in home and foreign, and then and then you can derive these things. So, and then another point, maybe somewhere here. And then here, foreign, that would create a supply of exports, maybe here, and the intersection would be world price. This is world price. So intersection is going to be my world price. And then say there is a tariff imposed. With the tariff imposed, world price, what's going to be the effect on the world price if the tariff is imposed? Will it increase tariff in home on that good? Will it increase or decrease? Tariff in home? Decrease, right? Because when you impose tariff,